On this week's show, the Georgia Southern football team inch closer and closer to their season opener against Savannah State. We take a look at how things are going and what positions are still up for grabs. All that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagles next. And welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, we still have some time to go. It seems like you can't get here quick enough, I guess, with the high school football season starting this week. You kind of get in that mode of, yeah, we're here. And now we still have to wait a couple weeks before Georgia Southern hits the field at home to take on Savannah State. And if we think we're anxious about it, you got to imagine the players and coaches at this time are starting to get kind of anxious as well. Yeah, you go through the summer and sure the players have workouts, but still no classes. You're not getting yelled at by coaches every five seconds. Same kind of goes for us. It's a little bit of a vacation in the summer and it kind of flies by when you're having that fun. But then the excitement starts to build and it's like you hit the brakes there. That, that opening day never seems to get there for the players who have been at it since the beginning of August going under that heat in Statesboro, it wears you down. There's nothing they want more than to see a jersey other than navy blue or white standing out there or for them yellow to hit. Or red. Well, you aren't allowed to hit the yellow <laughs> or red ones, but they cannot uh, get that orange and lighter blue and uh-huh. white of Savannah State on the field soon enough. I know these guys are chomping at the bit, not quite sure how the game's gonna turn out. I know Savannah State hasn't been able to give much of anybody a game recently. Hopefully that continues, at least for the wing column's sake for Georgia Southern, but uh, whether uh, they're tested or not, it's going to be good for the Eagles to just finally get out there. But as you said, still two weeks away. Well, we had a chance to talk with head coach Tyson Summers and some of the players about the, the having to wait another couple weeks before they finally get a chance to get on the field. I mean, you got to think about it. We go through the summer just, you know, playing against each other, but since the beginning of August, it's basically just been hitting each other, play after play, day after day, and you know, it's like we're preparing every single day to get better, we're preparing just to go out there, but yet again, another sad another sad Saturday. So <laughs> <laughs> this week again, another sad Saturday we gotta come into. But Savannah State's around the corner, so right now everybody's fired up and ready. And when they come around, we'll be ready for them. You guys know how good the defense is. I'm quite sure you're <laughs> anxious to be able to go out there, kind of let the fans know what it's all about. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> everybody's, you know, Everybody was talking about offense, offense, offense. You know, Statesboro, Georgia Southern, option, blah, blah, blah. Hey, what about defense? No one ever talks about us. You know, we're the ones coming out there and, you know, making stops and getting offense the ball. But hey, it is, you know, how things happen. But this year, defense, we're fired up to show our fans and show Georgia Southern that we're here to come play. It was great, you know, um, like you said, it's anxious to get out there and compete against another team, you know, a different color jersey. But, you know, overall, you know, we, you know, um, you know overall, I think the team's pretty healthy. We feel pretty good. What areas do you think over the next two weeks you'd like to see maybe pick up a little bit? Uh, probably just our tempo. You know, we go pretty fast right now, but you know, we can always get better at that, you know, and stress the defense that we're about to play with our fast pace. I feel like we've made a big step in this new offense that um, they brought in here. And, um, I feel like everybody's doing a great job just buying in to what we have going on, especially with the scheme-wise, you know, all the, te- all the techniques. They- They'll come into play, but you know that's, that just comes with um, preparation. You know, I feel like at, at practice we've done a great job, just making sure that we've been focused and just dialed in on what's going on. Is it good that there's still a couple weeks before you guys start things off? Uh, it is good because you know, um, you know, you want to put the icing on the cake with the um, new offense. You know, that's what we're trying to do now, just making sure that we're um, our P's and Q's. Like, we're on our P's and Q's pretty much. We're in a good place. I really think that. I think that the big thing is trying to refine what we are again. Uh, when you go through camp, two weeks of installation on both sides of the ball in special teams, trying to now make sure that we hone in on exactly what we're going to try to be successful at. Uh, you can't do that with two open playbooks on both sides of the ball. We've tried to refine and detail out and cut back a lot of things we feel like are going to give us the best chance to be successful. And then again, trying to work as many situations as we can, trying to do a good job in meetings. A lot of what we've done is watching NFL video uh, of real-time stuff so that we understand, hey, here's a clock management scenario. Is this a good decision? Is this a poor decision? Where did they make a good, um, where did the coaches do a good job? Where did a player make a poor decision? We've done that about six or seven days already, and I think that's been very helpful for us. Well, Mike, with still a couple of weeks, I think Coach Summers, in some respects, may like to take the field just to kind of see what he's got. 
but in another regard, he'd probably rather have another couple weeks to try to look around and see what he's got, try to build some depth, and try to get some questions answered as to who he wants to put on the field and who he may have to sub in. Well, talking to Coach last week, I asked him, you know, he had said that during camp, before classes started, that everything had been installed in terms of what they can run offensively, what they can run defensively. But just because it's installed doesn't mean it's perfected, doesn't mean you know exactly who you want running it. So not so much uh, uh, pregame preparation for Savannah State yet, I wouldn't think. That'll start next week. So these last couple of weeks, trying to get guys in, get guys out. I know Summers has talked about intensity a lot, about competing on every single snap, even in practice. He said he doesn't hesitate one bit to take a first string guy out of there if he's not doing his job right. That serves two purposes. You get the discipline right that you'll need during those tough games. You also get to get a look at a couple of guys farther down the depth chart, see who can help you in spots. Well, it looks like right now, pretty set in the offensive backfield. Even if we don't know who's gonna be starting at quarterback, we know it's gonna be either Fabian Upshaw or Kevin Ellison. Then you've got LA Rams, B, Matt Breida, Wesley Fields, and then maybe Chaz Thornton behind them. Receivers look like they're fairly locked in. The offensive line seems like there's still maybe a chance of who's gonna play guard, who's gonna play tackle, but he's kind of got the rotation set. It seems like one of the bigger question marks may be in the secondary. That seems to be the one that he still has a couple of weeks and he's probably gonna need before he makes some of those final determinations. Plenty of question marks, and you remember, Eagle fans, if you look back to last season, the big question mark was on the offensive line. Four starters gone from the 2014 uh, squad that led the nation in rushing or paved the way for the nation's leading rushing team. They were able to cobble together, grow up together, had some growing pains, especially early against West Virginia. Maybe they weren't quite ready, got thrown into the fire, but by the end of the season, once again, the nation's leading rushing team, you don't get that done without great play up on the offensive line. They're a little more solid this year, at least in terms of that top end of the, uh, the depth chart. The defensive secondary facing the same problems. They lose all but one of their contributors from last season. Darius Jones returns. He should be a stalwart, help uh, some of the guys, some of the younger guys grow up a little bit. But let's not forget that when you look at recruiting rankings and stars don't mean anything on the field, but if you want to believe the hype, Georgia Southern has brought in eight or nine guys as highly regarded as any defensive secondary players that they've ever brought in. So if even a few of those turn out, I think that they'll be in good shape. It is a question mark, but I'm not willing to call it a weakness, not just yet, not until you see them on the field. Yeah, not a weakness, but still definitely up for grabs as to who's going to be playing where. We had a chance to talk with head coach Tyson Summers about what, play, what positions are still up for grabs and what he's looking for in the next couple weeks. I think that right now, every day, you know, we uh, we make adjustments uh, to, to depth charts and situations, and it's it's hard. You know, I've said it a bunch. You might be the, uh, you know, when I again, I kind of always go back to linebacker play because um, that's where I've spent most of my career. But I've said it a bunch of times. You might be the backup will, but if you're the sixth linebacker, that doesn't mean that you're playing. If the starter gets injured or comes out, it's the fourth best linebacker, and they've got to be able to play multiple spots. Same thing goes for the defensive line. And same thing goes for the offensive line. We certainly have guys that are uh, guard tackles. We have guys that are center guards and guys that have got to be able to roll. Some of those guys, uh, again, is not necessarily going to be the backup left guard or the backup right tackle that comes in the game. It's going to be the sixth offensive lineman that comes in. And so as we continue to go through depth, uh, we're certainly trying to figure out what our best role is. And, and we're very fortunate. we got guys that can do a lot of different things. Uh, again, you go back to two safety positions. I really feel like that Josh Moon and or Jay Bowdry and or Rod Murray have an opportunity to play either one of the safeties and or nickel. Uh, I think that you see guys that are young corners that are really talented that may wind up being a safety one day based on how, how big they wind up getting. And I think you see a guy like Ironhead that could play Sam Mike or Will or be able to stay in the game as a nickel either one. You know offensively we have those, they, we have those bodies really at H. We have those bodies at Y. And uh, we have running backs that can do a lot of different things for us. They don't necessarily uh, just have to line up and carry the ball. They've got to be able to get, be guys that can obviously pass, protect, and catch the ball as well and, uh, and be able to do some things on offense they really haven't been asked to do in the past. Well, Mike, before we go, other sports going on right now at Georgia Southern. You have volleyball uh, getting set, and soccer has already gotten things underway. 
Right, the Georgia Southern women, a couple of tough losses so far uh, going to Jacksonville State. Their latest loss finally got a, a first goal of the season on the board, but still having to shore up the defense a little bit. This is a tough schedule, especially looking at uh, uh, the men with Coastal Carolina coming in now, one of the better programs in the country. So both the soccer teams, a very tough road in front of them in Sunbelt play. We'll see how things turn out, maybe when it gets a little cooler, especially playing in Statesboro. <laughs> It's bad enough for the football guys who are just sprinting here, sprinting there. I can only imagine. I'm not exactly the build for the soccer type. If you, I, I, I couldn't hack it there running three and four and five miles. So good luck to them. Hopefully the weather will cool down. Hopefully those goals will start to uh, heat up. And then looking at volleyball, they jump right into the fire as well, going up to Penn State for an opening preseason tournament. And if you don't know much about volleyball, that's, uh, that's a part of the country that you want to go to. They don't. They don't mess around with volleyball there, so the Eagles are going to get all they want up in State College. All right, well, that'll wrap things up for now. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. We thank you for joining us and hope to see you again next week.